Welcome to another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing. Today, I'm gonna to give you a tour of my 2006 Grady White Gulfstream 232. So if you're considering this boat for yourself, or maybe you watch my videos and just wanna see more about the boat you see me fishing on, stay tuned and I'll do my best to educate you about this wonderful boat. Grady White lists this boat as 23 foot five inches long with a beam of nine foot three inches wide. But when measuring this boat from the tip of the bow pulpit to the very back of these engines on the motor bracket, it's 30 feet. And if you're gonna be putting this boat in a garage or pole barn, I've measured from the front of the trailer all the way back to the back of the engines, and it's 33 feet. And the width of the boat, including the trailer, is 10 feet. And you're gonna need 13 foot height clearance. So you can see it's a much bigger boat than that 23 foot listing. And this hull uses the Grady White CV technology, which according to Grady is gonna really cut through that chop, but give you stability at rest or at slow speeds. And at the stern, it's got a swim platform as well as a ladder, and it's powered with two Yamaha 150 four strokes. All right, let's climb aboard for a topside tour. This is seven feet wide and five foot long. So it's got a really nice space for fishing back here. And starting with some of the features on this boat, this boat did come with every optional feature that Grady had for this boat. But we do have a raw water wash down on this side and a fresh water wash down on this side. And on the stern, we have this seat which can be lowered and then we have a large fish box. This is a 297 quart fish box that drains outside. Next to that, we have a little bit of a storage area. You could use this for most anything. It's got this box that comes out. And underneath that, you've got your battery switches as well as access to your battery and pumps and to your bilge overall. This boat does have the optional bolsters all the way around, which is nice for fishing. You have access to your bilge right here. And this is the plug-in for your battery chargers. And facing forward, we have a 36 gallon live well. And this aerator tube does store in these clips when not in use. One thing I like about this live well as the water comes out from this direction right here, and obviously you can see it, it's pointed towards the side as opposed to coming down or just straight out. So what that does, that's gonna create sort of a circular pattern for your water. And then to our right, we've got another insulated fish box. And this is a 265 quart fish box. Right now, I just use it for storage, but it does have a drain that discharges overboard and is insulated if you were to use it as a fish box. And above that, we have a tackle storage area. This holds two tackle trays. And then we also have some drawers over here underneath the passenger seating. For rod storage, you've got two on each side as well as two on each side of the post for the hard top. You've got spreader lights on the top, as well as LED lights on either side. And there's two rod holders on each side that could be used for rods, or as you can see, I've used them for my deck brush and my gaff. All right, moving towards the helm area, this boat came with Garmin Electronics. I tend to use this one for my navigation and this one for my depth finder when I'm running. And you've got all the standard controllers here. These are your Yamaha gauges here. This is your trim tab indicator. And then you've got all your switches for your wash down, your lights, your windshield wipers, those kind of things. And right here, you've got your trim tab switches, obviously your throttle, there's your windlass controller right here, your ignition. 
And over here, this is kind of a nice feature. This is your knob that turns on the water, fresh water for your windshield wiper on your starboard side. And as far as convenience, you've got a couple cup holders. You've got one here, as well as some storage over here for different things. Here's a cup holder right here. And then port side, you've got the same sort of setup with the cup holder and you've got a little bit of more storage here for phones and different things you may need to put there. What's nice about this helm area is you do have an overboard drain so you can wash out this area. And then on the hard top you've got different storage places. This is nice here. It's got this little net that kind of keeps things from falling down on you when you open. Up here could be storage. This happens to be where the radio is. And then above that, it's got storage for your life jackets. It does have Isinglass. I don't have it on right now, but I do have the panels that, that zip up to the back here, making this whole helm enclosed if you were to use it in really cold weather. And on those warmer times, this panel over here and this panel over here does open for some breeze, as well as the little triangle windows on either side. So this boat is really comfortable in the winter when it's really cold as well as in the summer there's a there's enough air coming through here that you really don't feel hot even with all this eyes and glass enclosure all right moving down to the cabin area it's got a couple nice steps here it's not too difficult to get in and out even for me i'm six foot one and it's actually nice and quite comfortable in here some of the comforts in here it's got an ice box here for your drinks and your food and that kind of thing. And this drain does drain overboard, which is kind of nice. It's got a sink. This is fresh water. Um, this boat does have a 12 gallon fresh water tank. Here it's got a stove. This has actually been replaced. This was not standard, but this is a butane type stove. It does have rod holders on this side over here. So it's a storage for two more rod holders. And if you were to use this boat for sleeping or just for resting, it does come with cushions that cover this area right here. So that's a comfortable place for two people. I am six foot one, like I said, and I can lay down on this V berth with these other two cushions here and probably have four, five, six inches to spare. So as small as it looks, this is actually quite surprisingly roomy. So definitely two adults could sleep in this area right here with these other two sections put down. And then there's a third bunk. This couch cushion raises up to make a third bunk. There's some straps underneath here that attach to these brackets up here and then another one up here. And like I said, I'm six foot one, I've laid on this. And this is surprisingly roomy for such a small looking area. So definitely someone of my size or smaller could sleep on this third bunk as well. And on the starboard side, there is a built-in head. This has a 10 gallon storage tank as well as a macerator pump. And as far as ventilation, towards the front, you have a hatch that opens. You also have a window on the starboard and the port side, and all three of these compartments come with screens. There's also screens in these ventilation slits in this cabin door. So once this top is closed, you can have this cabin enclosed from the bugs, but yet have ventilation. Facing towards the stern, we've got a little storage pocket here. This is where we have our safety equipment. This is where our fire extinguisher is mounted. It has a mount for the e -perb as well. There's your stereo, your controls for the head, and there's a cabin light on top. Here's the cabin with all the cushions installed. And I measured it. It's a little over seven feet long, and it averages about 39 inches wide. Headed towards the bow, you can see I've got this rail mounted rod holder. I've got one on the other side as well, but we've got this nice deep channel to walk towards the front as well as some poles to hang on to safely. And once we get up here, you see you've got the standard cleats and safety lights, but 
Also, you've got this windlass, which I have found, especially fishing by myself on reefs, to be extremely valuable. And then on top, we do have a radar system. You've got your horn, you've got your antenna for your VHF, as well as two outriggers on both sides. All right, that concludes our walkthrough. I just wanted to kind of go over a couple pros and cons after using this boat for a little over a year. First off, the cons. One would be, I wish there was a little bit more rod holders than there are. Like I said, you've got your two on each post and I've added two more on the rails and you've got your four back here. But the problem is you really don't wanna have too many rods stored right here while you're fishing. So we wind up putting them over here on the T-top poles, but it's still just not quite enough. So what I'm gonna do is add some rod holders on top of the hard top, and that should solve that problem. The other con is actually the size of the fish boxes. While they're really big and they're really nice, it does pose a problem if you're catching smaller fish. So what I tend to do is I like to keep my fish in here as well as my frozen bait. So if I'm catching smaller fish, what I wind up doing is kind of putting my smaller fish over here, my bait over here, and then in the middle, I kind of put a bag of ice to kind of form a dam. So it would be nice if there was maybe kind of a divider right here where we could pile up the ice on this side, you know, and have some ice here for our bait. And the last con is the lack of fishing tackle storage. As I showed you earlier, we've got this compartment for two tackle trays and we've got these two drawers here. But it would be nice if there was just a little bit more storage, maybe some more drawers, maybe some more compartments for those tackle trays. But I bring my tackle bags on board anyway and it's really not a big issue. All right, let's go over the pros. So the main thing about this boat is it's big enough to go offshore safely and feel secure out there, but yet it's small enough for me to handle by myself as well as pull with my Ford F-150. The other thing, in addition to being a great fishing boat, is you can take the family out for even overnight excursions or just out to the sandbar. We've got a little grill that we put on the back here. We can get our music going and we can have a good time just anchored off into a little protected area and just have a nice family day. And the last pro is, even though it's an offshore boat and a heavy offshore boat at that, it weighs about 4,600 pounds without the engines. It's still powered by two 150 four strokes. So my fuel bill is not outrageous and it doesn't cost a whole lot to take this boat offshore for a great day of fishing. That concludes our tour of the Grady White. If you found this video helpful or enjoyable, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I put out weekly videos fishing offshore in the Grady or inshore in my bay boat over here. If that sounds appealing, hit that subscribe button so you won't miss my future videos. So until next time, I hope to see you on another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing.